Archery hunters, listen up. If you find yourself in the heart of King County, do yourself a favor and stop in at Rock Creek Archery, located in Tequila. They have everything you need if you're just beginning to the sport or you've been shooting for 20 years, even an indoor shooting range. Or check them out at rockcreekarchery.com. This section of the broadcast is brought to you by Burpaw. Burpaw.com. Use Ridge 15 at checkout to receive a sweet discount. Hey, everybody, if you are looking for a game call that is elk, turkey, deer, predator calls, waterfowl calls, we highly recommend PhillipsGameCalls.com. Professional grade game calls made for every hunter. Welcome back to the Ridgeline Hunting Podcast, brought to you by Phelps Game Calls, with your hosts, David Crane and David Sandana. All right, everybody, welcome back. We are back in studio. We are no longer at the Sportsman Show. We're back fresh, yeah, man. Talk about an uh, invigorating week. I mean, I was, uh, you know, I was excited the whole time. Um, and this whole week has kind of been like a down for, <laughs> I mean, it's like you're on this high, you know, in uh, all the experiences we had there. And then this, you know, back at work, regular jobs, you know. So I felt, uh, I felt good, though. I feel like I, I feel like I, I should still be at a sportsman show somewhere. Yeah, we definitely need to look into doing more shows. We want to do more shows. We want to get out into the community of of uh, our hunters and anglers and just get out there and, and sell the brand and tell everybody what we're up to. And it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And there was a lot of people that were coming to our booth at the show and just saying how much they loved the podcast and how they liked the stuff on YouTube. And it was... um. It was really uplifting. It was it was fun. Just the amount of support from all just strangers, you know, people come up, hey, you know, that's awesome. Finally, finally, great to put a a name to a face, and um, you know, all the people coming up, and you know, it was just good. All the kids too. There was a lot of kids came in. They loved the candy bowl. Right? Yeah, they're all about that. <laughs> we actually, we actually had to hide the high chews. <laughs> so it was like, yeah. So we had like a whole thing of high chews, and every time, time I'd put like another handful of high chews in there, gone. We started giving them peppermints and like uh, all of a sudden there's a butterscotch in there. Yeah. They're like, what is this? I've never seen this. <laughs> now, back yeah. to 1892, this was the hit. <laughs> I was just over here. Where'd all the high chews go? <laughs> <laughs> that kid over there snagged them all. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, we had a good time. Well, we did some good interviews too. Um, we had a couple uh, good episodes. I mean, we're getting ready to air one of them tomorrow, I think. It'll be out on Monday which we're this is friday night um so it'll be out on monday and you'll probably by the time this airs the next one will already be out okay cool so we'll have um our guest randy newberg awesome randy Randy was awesome that was talk about a gracious man i mean that was just not even what i was expecting you know it's it's eye-opening when you see people on tv and you see them on the internet and you think they're just on this elevated position, but they're totally down to earth. So if nobody knows who Randy Newberg is, he would be one of the faces on, like, of hunting. Yeah, he's a proponent of public land access. Mm-hmm. Um, he has his own TV show. And he's been doing this for 30 years. Yeah. And like, he, um, so Randy Newberg also, he's a world famous elk hunter. He has a program called Outdoor School yeah. with uh, Corey Jacobson and um, Remy, Remy Warren. Warren. And he was yeah. telling me some other people on there was like doing the outdoor cooking part. And uh, they have just a conglomerate of people that contributed to this, sh- to this program to teach people how to uh, be successful in the outdoors. And, and so we're both going into that. Um, we're going to do yeah, it on there. And if, you, if you're it. interested in it, he gave us a discount code too, and yeah. it's it's a it's a well known discount code. It's called Randy. So when you <laughs> check out, use his name Randy, and you should get a discount. I think it was twenty percent. Yeah, something. I think it was twenty percent. And it the class is ninety nine ninety nine, so it's a hundred bucks. So you're gonna get twenty dollars off. You know, I mean, gonna do this class. It's he said that there's enough stuff in the class to last you um, months 
and you can watch them over and over and over again. So, I mean, really, if you want to brush up on something, you, you can the whole time. Mm -hmm. so it was, it was, it was awesome. really cool to, to hear about their contributions, and we had a great conversation. Um, I was actually blown away that it took an hour, and we just touched, like, the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Like, if the Titanic had touched the iceberg how we did, it would still be floating. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been, it would just, like, barely scratched it. Yeah. It, it was great conversation. Hopefully, everybody watched that show. Obviously, this is going to come out a few weeks after that. Uh, and then we had um, some Alaskan guides. Ru Rudy and Carson. Yep. Carter. Rudy Carter. and Carter. I always call Carter. him Carson. I don't know why. I yeah. don't, when I say Carson, I think of like... Uh, Jackie Chan when he's trying to find Carson City. <laughs> Which way is Carson City? You know, yeah. he's like this way. You know, like go there. Yeah, that's a yeah. Good show. Carter. Yeah, yeah. Carter. He he was awesome, and he he actually invited us on a hunt to go hunt mule deer in Nevada. Yeah, which is which is probably gonna happen because it, it's he's a Nevada native, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and he would he's not gonna be guiding us, but he's gonna just take us out. Yep. So that's kind of cool. Um, and I actually, I mean, out of all the people we talked to that were uh, guides and other sportsmen just visiting the show, he was like the happiest guy, just excited about the outdoors. Um, I've never met anybody actually like him in the aspects where he's just smiling as he's talking the whole time. Like, he, Yeah, this is a 19-year-old kid guiding in Alaska, and I guarantee you by the time he's 20, 21, He'll have more experience than most of the people out in the woods right now. And he loves it. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, this isn't just like a smirk or anything like that. He's smiling from ear to ear when you're just talking about the Brooks Range. Like, he's like, oh, my gosh, that is like the best. I mean, just he would come to our booth every night just because uh, that's when everything starts to cool down. And we would talk to him for over an hour. And he was just smiling from ear to ear. Just great character. Just an awesome kid. Mm -hmm. He was he was really cool. Yeah, I, I told him that he was living a dream. You know, and he's 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 young. Um, he has a, a lot of years. I mean, knock on wood. I mean, he is in Alaska in the wild and, and all that stuff. Things can happen. A lot of times, so. Yeah. Seldom as it may be. You know, he has the job where he's taking people out. And a lot of times people, this is like their once in a lifetime hunt. You know, and he's taking them out and fulfilling that dream for them. And it's the way he does it and what he, what some of the conversations we had, I mean, I, I won't share what he says about, you know, some of the things that take place in the woods um, or mountain range, but he's like, come on, this is the, this is the best. I mean, talk about enthusiastic. I, I mean, I can't believe I'm talking about him this much, but yeah. it was really impressive the way he, he handled him himself and the situations that he would be in and how he felt about hunting in general. Mm -hmm. I thought, damn, if I'm going with the guy, this is my guy, you know, because I want someone who wants me to be there, wants me to be successful. It's not going to be like, come on, you know, like a stick in the mud. I've, I've seen yeah. some, I've seen and heard some things that, uh, they're less than enjoyable, but I mean, talk about just momentum and I want to get off the subject cause I don't want to seem like there's like a bromance or anything, but if, as long as there's, <laughs> <laughs> as long as, you know, he just had a great enthusiasm, and he was super nice to be around. And, I mean, if I was going to spend a bunch of money to do something like that, I would want someone like him to take me out. So if you want to know what we're talking about, listen to the previous podcast to this one. And it's all on their guide service and Colby and oh no, Rudy. Rudy and why do we – we're getting all these names mixed up. We <laughs> talked to a lot of people, but – um that guide service is something that I would definitely invest in to, to go on the hunt just because of the, the, the owner is also the pilot. He's going to drop you off and you know, it's just an awesome program that they have going. Yeah, that was really, that was eye opening how involved they are. Cause you would think, you would think there's so much, there's a lot of moving parts, right? You're trying to get to Alaska. You know, they're talking about the different flights you take. You take like two flights before you even meet with them. Yeah, and, and then you're getting on another flight to go to camp. And your guide is flying you in, yep. and then they have their own plane and all the things. It's really interesting, and um, it's an adventure. I think we even covered it in the podcast. It's like an adventure before the adventure. Yep, yep, it's all on the podcast. I was actually um, not interviewing or a, a part of it in a way. I was behind the camera, so when you watch that podcast, I'm the cameraman. 
And yes, there's nothing going on with the camera. I'm just basically staring at the screen and watching these guys do their do their interview. But it was good. It was a good one. So during the during the um, sportsman show in Pialop, we had another opportunity to uh, walk around and just mingle. Yep. You know, we saw a lot of vendors that had cool things. There was mm-hmm. um, there was this uh, scope company. They had a pretty cool, almost like a BDC esque type scope. But it had uh, yardage on there, and, and they do a custom shop deal with your round, and your um, they take all your velocities and all your dope chart, and they input it into your scope, so you don't have to look at your butt of your gun. You know, it was really cool how it's printed on there. I think it was called, like, Quigley Ford. Um, they had a cool scope. And then uh, I can't remember the name of that outdoor company. They had those, like, retrofit beds for your truck. It was like an overland truck company. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember it either, but man, they had their vehicles out there and they had some pretty radical stuff like microwaves inside the trucks and <laughs> <laughs> their tents and everything. It was insane. Like gun locker and bow locker for in between your, your frame of your truck. I mean, just yeah, total nuts. custom fabrication. Yeah. It was really cool stuff. It was, it was cool. Like if you're going to overland, I wish I could remember that company. Cause that's who yeah. you want to buy all your stuff. From. Yeah. In high high detail. I think a lot of the things they were talking about came from Australia. They're imported. Yes, because yeah. they're five years ahead in like the overlanding, like world yeah. compared to where we're at. And we're just now starting to catch up to where they're at. So yeah, that's pretty much our recap on the show. We're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna be down in Portland on Saturday on the Saturday show. We're just gonna do some interviews and and mingle and and meet some people down there, and we'll see how that turns out but i'm i have a good feeling about it so it should be another fun adventure uh but i wanted to we just wanted to take a time kind of spitball we have, we have our friend matt in the studio today yeah matt sims he's here and uh he was with me on the bigfoot expedition if you enjoyed episode 36 this which, is my partner in the crime which is actually the top downloaded podcast for the last like 30 days of our of our analytics i was been looking at it um yeah the the sasquatch pod is doing very good <laughs> it's doing good it's not bringing in any money but it's you know people no, are, but enjoying, people it are enjoying it and i mean um that was like one of the things when people were like oh well i'm not really interested in hunting and fishing when they came by and we're like well we talk about bigfoot and they're like what <laughs> like yeah here talking about old squatchy that's my buddy <laughs> <laughs> so we do have a wide range of things that we talk about but yes it's mainly fishing and hunting and in, in the outdoors but yeah they've had an awesome experience and a lot of people are you know want to hear the story yeah it was it was everybody by now if you've seen the previous episode you've heard the story and um today we want to talk about matt's experience because matt is um he has his own experience with the outdoors and yeah, if you ask his friends they'll tell you various things so but matt is not an outdoorsman he's not a hunter He's not a fisherman. He just enjoys going out camping. Yeah, nothing and wrong so with he, that. He likes outdoors, and but Matt, are, so tell us about yourself. Are you are you opposed to fishing? Are are you? What is it about the the outdoors that never? That why you never got started in the outdoors? Hmm. You know, I think I've been outdoors most of my life. You know, in a working environment doing, you know, diesel mechanics in the woods and stuff like that and riding quads and dirt bikes and stuff like that. And I've always wanted to get into it, but I've never been around guys like you who have, you know, given me the opportunity to mentor me into getting in into it. So I've always been interested in it. It just so happens Davis has an internship available right now. Yeah, okay. man. Well, there's a paperwork over there. Sign up. Yeah. <laughs> The no, that's, I'm always down for bringing out people that have not done it. Um, my buddy Mike, he just started hunting last season. He had never even had any real interest in it. And then he picked up a bow. And all of a sudden, he started shooting a bow. And he was like, this is really fun. I think I want to start hunting. He was like, if it's just hiking around with the bow and you get to you know, bring home meat, you know, if you can get it done, I'm, I'm all for that. And he dove in, and he dove in deep, and he was all about it. So Head yeah. first, didn't care how deep it was, just nope. went for it. And I took him on some gnarly stuff. Dave knows the terrain where I took him out bear hunting, and it is straight up and straight down. Mm-hmm. And he was 
he was all for that. Or yeah, straight up and straight down. <laughs> a few years ago, I uh, wanted to take on a hobby, so I told my wife um, I was kind of researching upland bird hunting. Mm -hmm. So I had always wanted a bird dog. So I, you know, growing up, my aunt had a uh, German short hair, you know, uh, a wired hair. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, a German short haired pointer. And this dog, like, loved to cuddle as a couch potato. And I, I think I, like, correlated the love I had for that dog. And I wanted to, like, get one of my own and share, like, an outdoors experience with, you know, with, a, with an animal. Like, you know, you see on the hunting shows and stuff like that. So I ended up getting a wired hair pointer puppy. And I was reading books. We were going out in the woods, you know, and I was starting to train her. And I trained her to be a great hunting dog. But where I fell short was is I never became the hunter. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have this wired hair pointer that, you know, will spend hours in the yard pointing at a squirrel or any bird or whatever. I feel like I'm doing a disservice to her, you know, by never getting into it myself, you know. So something I'd like to do for sure. It's me too. You know, the, the upland thing, um, I have some friends that are really into it. If you want to take her out and run her, um, they go to Eastern Washington and they run Britney's, but I mean, I'm sure they'll take you out and I'll go with you because I'd like to see it happen. The, the, the knobs that came by too, Chris and, uh, Dylan mm -hmm. knob, they, that's like their thing. They even asked to come on, come onto the podcast to talk about pheasant hunting. That's like, from like October till it closes, that's what they're doing. And they run their dogs too. They have a lab, two labs. Mm. So. I think it's something about the relationship, like the hunter with his dog that really, you know, enticed well, me. There's a, want, there's a bond there. Yeah. You know, yeah. like there is a bond mm -hmm. and it's, it, and it's real. It's a whole different level of experience when you see that dog working and, it, and you say it like, I like to see a dog work. And it's like, it's not just the dog doing what it loves to do. Cause it's, 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 when you see it in action, you could tell the dog is enjoying what they're doing, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like, how often do they release their primal uh, intentions, right? Like right. they're not just going out and like, Arr, they're going crazy and being like a pack. Um, this last year uh, was one of my first times duck hunting behind a dog um, or with a dog. And uh, this, little, this little pup, man, she was probably uh, just over a year old. Um, dog's name was millie and millie was the best i mean she was on it she had a good handler um and i i just watching her go in her her attention span and her she was like if you gave her a command she was stop she he, I, that's not the command stop but he would do something and she would re uh refocus he would refocus her with hand signals and then she would go on a line boop, and she'd go right there and she would spot that bird and she would go pick it up and bring it right back and then she would deliver it to the person that shot it. You know, it was just like they had this set up, you know, five, uh, five layout blinds and Millie three. She would bring it to the middle. Like, I don't know how they trained her to do that, but it was awesome. So, you know, your puppy, I, I mean, I love that dog, too, because she's just like the coolest German wire hair I've ever been around. And, you know, we, when we went out camping, she was all running around having a great time. <laughs> and just, just the coolest dog. I mean, you, something, I mean, she's a lover. Um, but to, I can't imagine her as a puppy. That's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, you got her as a puppy. I can imagine her being just cute as hell probably, you know. Yeah, and, you know, it's funny too because when I got her, she was like six, eight weeks. When do, when do they even, when does a breeder even release a puppy? Is it like eight weeks or something like six that? Six to eight weeks, I think, yeah. And she was so small, but she was pointing out in the backyard. I got a, um, like a bull whip, you know, like... And I put a, a pheasant wing on the end of it. And the guy I got her from had kind of coached me a little bit on how to get her to start pointing and stuff. And seeing this this little dog pointing in the yard. I mean, I was hook, line, and sinker. We were going to, <laughs> uh, uh, was it the T Tacoma Sportsman Club off Canyon? Before they put the Amazon building in. Anyways, there oh, was yeah. some wooded area. So I'd go out there after work every day. And... You know, after reading books and watching YouTube and all this stuff, to see her, like, from day to day starting to progress, I was really excited about it. But I just got too caught up with work and, 
you know, I life just, happened. I, it, life happened. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. the mentorship thing. Like, it's one thing to to you know get the book and get the dog and you know do the tactics they show you in there, but you needed someone else to kind of bring you into that too. You know, so yeah. you brought Pepper along, and you need someone to bring you along. Exactly. You know, and so um, you know that'd be that'd be something to focus on this year. I know it's something that we're we're that's one of our main focuses is is the expansion of hunting and to bring new people in and this is an opportunity you know to do just that Mm -hmm. there's a lot of education and everything involved with hunting that what we're trying to bring to everybody out here you know we're not just talking about our experiences but what we also messed up on and you know us mentoring other people i mean not only our kids but adults as well um you know my buddy mike's not a child he's a you know, 36 year old man that wanted to get into hunting. I don't think there's an age. You, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you want to get out and enjoy yourself and, and challenge yourself, cause hunting is a challenge. It's a challenge. It's hard. It's not easy or everybody would do it. And you know, for, for us to be able to mentor somebody and teach somebody that, and you know, maybe you teach your kids that, I mean, it's just a generational thing. It's just going to keep on getting passed down and we don't want it to go away. Mm-hmm. the progression so, the progression is real you know you once you get in that water you start to realize like there's so much there's so many things you could do in there it's it's not just you know pheasant hunting that's just the the key to get you in there mm-hmm. you know you, you get in there with pheasant you're like hey man i don't try this duck hunt thing out now you're out there doing that and uh you do it with some buddies and i mean it's it's maybe you only would ever do bird hunting but then you might jump into big game water you know or and you just jump into a bigger bird and hunt turkeys because that's fun. That's that's <laughs> yeah yeah and that's something you can do right away easily. I mean those are things we can we can do yeah, right turkey away. Turkey hunting is super fun. Yeah, yeah. And you don't pheasant, know the whole, pheasant you know. hunting is is difficult. I got a whole tote up there that says miscellaneous camo right there. There's a whole bunch of camo that'll fit you right there. Yeah, I I, have, I actually have some too. Yeah, yeah. we got camo. Yeah. We got extra shotguns. We got, and, we got stuff. Yeah, so we can get you out there and and uh, wallop a big old tom. That's that's fun. You know, for real, though, what deterred me towards the end was I realized I was to the point where I had to start training her with live birds. And from all the stuff that I was reading and watching, um, it was suggested that, and I could be wrong. Maybe I watched the wrong videos, but um, like taking pigeons and breaking their wings and hiding them in underbrush and stuff like that. And for me... Like, I never want to see an animal suffer, right? Like, I think there's something about hunting, you know, going out and, and you know, it's the journey, right? But I didn't want to just, you know, break a Purposely. bird's wings yeah. just to train my dog. You know, and maybe maybe that's wrong or right in somebody's eyes. I don't know. But that's kind of where I didn't have a mentor, and that's kind of where I fell off, and it was like, well, I, I guarantee there's she's probably be a great different family dog tricks, you know, you know to yeah. that, you know, tips and tricks. Sure. Um, you know, it, it <laughs> goes back to like, I'm you sorry, can't, and maybe you know, you it's can't just, always yeah. believe what you read on the yeah, internet. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm not laughing at the thing. I'm just thinking like, if you're trying to get your kid into fishing, you're just like, get out there and snap that worm in half, damn it! Yeah. <laughs> I want you to break two worms a day. You know, like, yeah, it's just like seems uh, counterintuitive to me. You know, I have heard of people. Um, using things that they have killed and, use, you know, like a, like an old wing or something, sure. you know, and, and use that to get a scent or, you know, um, you know, their buddies go pheasant hunting and they'll use like the carcass, you know, stuff like that. Um, but I'm, I'm not a bird dog trainer. Yeah. I, I have no idea. I, I, that's, yeah. that's like, uh, all so, new to me. I, I have no idea what any of that is about. Gene, I've never, I've never what, even done any of that. I've never duck hunted or pheasant hunted. I'm kind of curious what you do with the pigeon after it's, you know. Like, why would you do that? You know, it seems kind of odd. I don't know. Me, you know who would, who would be a good person to ask? Lusk. That's right. Mm-hmm. Jeff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we have a buddy that has, like, uh, I don't know what kind of dogs he has, but he's, like, one. Like, Brit- Brittany's, I think. Oh, is it? Yep. Yeah, he's won tournaments and stuff with these with these dogs. So, yeah, he would be the person He's an excellent, ask. excellent dog trainer. I mean, he's, um, I've asked him, and he's like, man, it's just repetition, you know? maintain steadiness repetition but he's he's super good and i'm sure it's way more involved than just repetition mm. you know but I, I have a little chihuahua dog that if you open a snack pack <laughs> that dog is sitting there looking at you so i'm pretty sure it knows the program you know? <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah yeah we definitely need to get you out you need to take your hunter's ed mm. you can do it all online 
Um, and I, I, I'm not sure if they're doing in-person classes still. I think you can still probably do that online as well. But They brought back the field in-person field days now. So You have to do it, though? I thought you had to do it if you're under the age of 12. I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I feel like I that'd be no more idea. my style, you know, the in-person field day. They got all these 12-year-olds and Matt over there. <laughs> Dude, that's what it felt like. So my, my brother and I, uh, Law and I, took Hunter's Ed together, and we're like the only adults in the class. Mm-hmm. Maybe one other guy. So when it came to field day, you know, it was like Cub Scouts, you know, running around, and like we're like the only adults. <laughs> like, this is going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, at, le- at least you passed. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. I had a great time. It was fun. Did you do the, the 20 gauge uh, clay shoot there? Or was that at TSC? Yeah. 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 That was pretty cool because when I shot my clay, I ejected my my round and it freaking went right into my pocket. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Party, <laughs> Party Rick, favor. Well, so the guy that was with us, Rick Johnson, he actually taught me how to shoot bows. Um, he was like, you ain't doing that twice. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Instantly does it again. <laughs> <laughs> Smells the gunpowder. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Awesome. So let's make that a plan. Get you out and do something. Get, you know, start with turkeys. And we have two months uh, yeah. until turkey season. Yeah, so it's right around, it changes, you know, a day or two. Middle of April. Yeah, right around April 14th. In between the 14th and the 16th is a start. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you got a couple months. I definitely love to. All Turkey. in. I mean, you're probably looking 60 bucks in a weekend, you know, once you once you buy your turkey tag and small game license if you want to do that. Yeah, if you uh, just wanted to start off with that, it's not very expensive. It's, yeah, it's, it's not bad at all. It's cheap. We have, we you know, we bring out a big, we have a big tent, you know, we'll go out there. The and, tent Mahal? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a yeah. big one. Mm-hmm. It's nice. like a tent person. We'll be out there eating... Uh, Mountain House meals and MREs, the occasional tortilla with peanut butter. With honey on it? Ooh, <laughs> that's my jam. Nice. Yeah, that's, yep. that's perfect. That's shit. <laughs> so. Well, I'll bring the wild turkey in case we don't <laughs> find any wild. Well, that's a classic right there. We don't even need a cap after it's open. You just throw the cap away. <laughs> <laughs> that's the challenge. So today's going to be kind of a short episode. I think... Um, we recap the show. I just wanted to introduce Matt to everybody. Um, he may or may not find himself here more often, depending on how we get set up. But yeah, um, we have um, he's he's going to get started, and we have uh, the sportsman <clears throat> show in Portland coming up. We're going to be there. Uh, we got turkey season right around the corner tomorrow morning, which you guys will probably see pictures of online. I'm going steelhead fishing, so. Unless I get skunked, then you're not going to hear about it again. So, so look back on that because that will. This is going to be like three weeks two ahead. Weeks. Yep. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and look for the videos. We'll have videos out from the Portland show. Um, those will probably drop after this episode, and then also look for an announcement here coming shortly. We are going to be giving away a bow at the end of the year if we can get a thousand subscribers on our YouTube channel. Um, it's going to be an elite bow and I'll get more details with that, but it's going to be a ready to hunt bow. It's going to be a, a wide range. So it's, you can change the draw and it's going to be from 10 pounds to 60 pounds. Jeez. Yeah. So um, be looking for that. We're going to give that away at the end of the year. As long as we can hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube, so tell friends and family and everybody about it. Hit that subscribe button, and let's grow this thing. Share with your friends. Also, Dave, word big, big takeaway. What was your big takeaway from the Sportsman Show? Oh man, my big takeaway was, uh, to be honest, just keep grinding. Like we're we're on a good path, and people like what we're doing, and they like to see our ugly mugs on the screen. I guess so. You know, just keep on grinding and, and enjoy it. Embrace it. Enjoy it. Mine mine was similar. Uh, I, feel, I felt inspired by how many people actually came up and, and engaged with us and were willing to, I don't want to say get out of their comfort zone, but just express appreciation for what we're doing. Uh, it takes a certain amount of courage to get up in front of a microphone and put yourself online, you know, yep. and, and it's hard. it's hard to oftentimes – it and um, even some of the the crazier stuff, you know, the 
the off the wall topics. That's what I enjoy most is just getting up here, uh, sharing experiences and then just having a general conversation. And we're, we're real and authentic. I don't think that, um, you know, we have no script, you know, we don't, yeah, there's no outline. Yeah. You know, we kind of throw it off the hip and I think that keeps it more natural. Um, yeah, I I just think it keeps it more natural and people really like that. And that's what we're, that's what we're about. We're not doing anything fake. (laughs) Yeah. We'll have specific topics at times, but we like to just talk in general about the outdoors and, 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 and people are, people are enjoying it. And that was inspiring because I haven't, you know, we had zero feedback really other than the online stuff and you don't know how things are going and we're doing it because we wanted to, Mm -hmm. you know, so it was great, man. I, I, couldn't i don't think it could have gone any better um the laughlin's uh you know it was good working with them um you know it, was, it couldn't have gone any better i don't think and we're just gonna ha- keep rolling yeah we're gonna keep it going and you know 2023 there's gonna be some big changes going obviously now we're we're videoing we have a bunch of other stuff going on but hopefully everybody can see us evolve and grow and just be on this adventure with us. It's going to be awesome. Matt. Yes, sir. How was the first time on a podcast? This is first time on a podcast and he's, he's, he's up and running a little stage fright, you know, um, <laughs> appreciate the support though. And appreciate you guys having me on. And it's pretty inspiring, you know, to see your guys' journey and just kind of be a part of it for one night. So I'm, I'm real excited to see where it's going to go from here. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. And that was like what the show was. It was just yeah. kind of crazy. A lot of people just saying stuff like that. And it was just kind of like, I don't know, man, it just fills your chest up. But then it just makes you want to do it even more. So, it, yeah. So thank you, everybody, for the support. We really, really appreciate it. We've been having a lot of fun. This is going to be episode 40. Woo. <laughs> Insane episode 40. So we've we've just been enjoying the journey and thank you for following it with us. But please, if you're listening to this on a podcast, follow it. Make you know, leave a comment. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, you know, give us some feedback. We yeah. want to hear from you. Yeah, we like it. It's good. That's right. We appreciate you guys. Have a good night. Ciao.